Okay, sorry for that interruption. Um, <clears throat> we were discussing phosphodiesterases, and the reaction that they catalyze is the breakdown of this molecule, cyclic AMP. And the way in which they break it down is they break up this bond here, basically, using water. So what they do is they take a water molecule here, and they split the water molecule into two, and they take the hydroxyl group and they bind it to this carbon here and they take this hydrogen here and they bind it to the oxygen of the phosphate group there and what they create is AMP basically so they take cyclic AMP in water and they turn it into AMP and because you've broken something up uh, using uh, you've broken a bond using water it's known as a hydrolysis reaction Okay, so now let's draw out what we end up with here, which is AMP. So again, we draw our adenine. So um, you start off with the pyrimidine ring here, this six-membered ring where two of the entries are nitrogen. Uh, carbon, carbon, there we go. Uh, so um, then we have our alternating single and double bonds, like so. We put a hydrogen atom there, an amino group here, and uh, then off these two carbons here comes the imidazole group, uh, imidazole ring. So off these two carbons are nitrogens, and then off these two nitrogens uh, comes a carbon. And the imide bond is there between this nitrogen and this carbon. Okay, so you then put a hydrogen off here, and this nitrogen is connected down uh, to the carbon of the ribose. So now we'll put in ribose. Ribose is a five-membered ring. Uh, where one of the members is oxygen, but you do have a fifth carbon to ribose, which is off the four, comes off the fourth carbon. Okay, so we put a hydrogen there. The two second carbon still has its hydroxyl group and its hydrogen. This third carbon is where the reaction has happened. So we have taken a hydroxyl group, which we got from water, and added it onto that third carbon. So basically, the third carbon now has a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen. The fourth carbon has a hydrogen. And uh, this, this group up here, where with the fifth carbon up here, has a hydroxyl group coming off here, two hydrogens off this carbon here, and then a phosphate group off this oxygen here. So this is a phosphate group here. Okay, so that is what you overall get when you carry out this reaction. So basically, we've split up water, turned it into a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen. We've added the hydrogen onto this oxygen of this phosphate group, which creates us the hydroxyl group back here. And uh, we've added the hydroxyl group here onto that third carbon. And this molecule is adenosine, adenosine. Adenosine, remember, is the uh, name given to adenine bonded to ribose. And now we've got one phosphate group on here, so it's adenosine monophosphate. And abbreviated, uh, that is AMP. So abbreviated, this is adenosine monophosphate, AMP. So basically, what phosphodiesterases do is they take cyclic AMP and they take a water molecule and they break it down into AMP. They use the water molecule to hydrolyze this link between uh, the oxygen of the phosphate group here and the, car and the third carbon, and uh, that creates us uh, adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. Right, so why are these so, so important? Because they are very, very important. They're very important in targeting uh, these, uh, well, they're very important in the specificity of the signaling, of the signaling pathways associated with cyclic AMP. So basically, what this entire playlist is going to be on is um, how uh, cyclic AMP is used in signaling pathways, basically. And what we're going to see is that when cyclic AMP goes up, that, cause, that causes a huge number of reactions in a the cell. There are absolutely loads of reactions that cyclic AMP can trigger. So here's a conundrum. If you want the cell to do some specific action, so let's say we have a cell here, and in fact, let's say we have a specific part of the cell. So let's say we have a neuron here with the axon terminal there. Here is the soma of the neuron, and here is, let's say, a dendrite. Okay, and let's say we want some event to occur just in the axon terminal. I, we want a specific event to occur, and we want it to occur in the axon terminal. And this involves cyclic AMP signaling. 
then what, what we don't want to happen is we don't want cyclic AMP to go up in the entire cell and trigger off absolutely every single reaction that cyclic AMP triggers, which is loads and loads of things. You want a specific outcome, let's say, in the axon terminal. So if you want a specific outcome in the axon terminal, the first way you can ensure specificity is to have the receptors uh, for the signaling molecule that you're using. You can have the receptors in the axon terminal. So Okay, so you're going to try and get this neuron to do something. So you're going to send it some sort of chemical signal uh, to get it to do that. And obviously, if you want it to do something in the axon terminal, you'll put the receptors in the axon terminal. That's not uh, any sort of surprise. So that's one way in which you can assure specificity. And now you just want cyclic AMP to go up in the axon terminal. You don't want cyclic AMP to go up in the entire cell. So if you activate adenylyl cyclases, which are in this uh, membrane in the um, of the axon terminal, how do you stop the cyclic AMP that you make here diffusing off down the axon and going to the cell body? Well, basically, what you can do is put a wall of phosphodiesterases at the axon terminal. So you can put in, uh, sorry, at the junction between the axon terminal and the axon. So you can put in absolutely loads of phosphodiesterases here, which can break down the cyclic AMP that tries to get from the axon terminal into the axon. And basically, uh, that is one of the ways in which you ensure specificity of cyclic AMP signals using these phosphodiesterases. Uh, so you can block the cyclic AMP from leaving the axon terminal by putting walls of phosphodiesterases, which will just break any cyclic AMP, which even shows a sign of trying to get from the axon terminal to the axon.